morning. And welcome to worship at Slackwood Presbyterian Church. Whether you are here with us in our beautiful sanctuary or online, we are glad you are joining us this morning. We have a few announcements before we turn to worship of God. This is our first Sunday back inside after having worshiped on our lovely church grounds for several months. The church leadership appreciates your cooperation as we put the safety of our congregation first in all the decisions we make. As we continue to do that, we're requiring masks inside the sanctuary. In addition, the masks allow us to sing, which is an important part of our worship service. We're also using distance seating, so there's at least, there's at least three feet between people, which is what is presently being used in facilities and in school systems. We know too how important it is for our congregation to socialize and to catch up with each other. We encourage you to do that while the weather is nice outside. There's plenty of room right outside our main door for you to get together and talk. And we hope that you will exit keeping the social distance of three feet in mind. Know again how much we appreciate your cooperation. Also, since the practice, what we've been practicing since the pandemic start is a shortened version of our service, allowing us a limited time indoors in an enclosed area. One of the ways we do that is by not singing all the verses of every hymn. So for a few weeks, a few weeks, I'm going to continue to print the words of the hymns in the bulletin so you don't get confused. But if you notice, I also put the hymn number and the verses we're singing. So if you like to use a hymnal and you follow the bulletin, you'll know which verses to sing. My goal is always to make the bulletins user friendly, but at some point I'm gonna stop printing those words to the hymns. If you're still uncomfortable coming back inside, worship is still being live streamed. Uh, Patrick is continuing to do that for us and we appreciate that. Uh, the Board of Deacons is scheduled to meet after worship this morning. There's going to be a church cleanup day on Saturday, October 30, outside cleanup, rain date is November 6th. Come out that morning for an hour or two, the whole morning, whatever you like, work together with your church family cleaning up. Uh, we're still working on a new church directory. If you did not have a picture in the last directory or you would like a new picture, Sean Baker's here this morning and we'll take your picture after worship. If you have a picture you'd like to use or you'd like us to use, just email it to Bill Mansman. His email address, I hope, is in the bulletin somewhere. Yes, it is. Are there other announcements that should be made? Bill? Um, yeah, let's, we welcome all back into our sanctuary. We just want to let you know the fans are on because we need to have air circulation coming through here. And uh, for a period of time, the must we can stand, there is going to be air coming in from the front of the sanctuary. And we're going towards the back. There's fans outside the windows. And the fan is on in the kitchen, which will draw the air. So the idea was to look to need to have air circulation. Our, our normal heating and air conditioning system does not provide enough circulation in order to do that. So that's why we'll see those three stands on. Okay, so thank you to the Property and Finance Committee for making sure that the air is circulating through here at all times. If it's a little cool for you, remember to bring a sweater with you. Are there any other announcements? Uh, Beth. Tom and I are celebrating our 30th anniversary. Congratulations. 30th wedding anniversary for Tom and Beth Clark. 30 years ago, right here in this sanctuary. Congratulations. Other announcements? If not, let's now turn our focus to the worship of God. Please join me in the call to worship, printed in the bulletin. The words God speaks are the life and sustenance of all that exists. 
The spirit stirring in our souls is the inspiration for creativity, compassion, joy, and community. Life giving, life restoring, life fulfilling God. May our whole lives be worshiped. In all things, may we seek to connect with and to reflect your love and your hope. Let us pray. God, quiet our minds, still our hearts, for your living ways are all we seek. Strengthen our lives and inspire our spirits today. Amen. We will sing hymn 400, I rejoice when I heard them say. You may be seated. Let us use our voices to declare those things we have said and done that have spared, that have separated us from God and from each other, that we may experience God's mercy and receive God's forgiveness. Let us pray. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you. By what we have done, by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart and soul, mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us in what we are and direct what we shall be so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. The words of assurance. Siblings, God is at work in us and with us. 
hear the promise of God, even when we are still far off from what we are called to, by God to be. Our God sees us and is filled with compassion. God rejoices over each of us. Amen.
not used to that anymore. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. That was quite beautiful. All right. All right. Our text for today comes from the book of Job, chapter 38, verses 1 through 11, and verses 34 through 41. Listen for the word of the Lord. And then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up your loins like a man. I will question you, and you shall declare to me, where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements, surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk, or who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy? Or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb, when I made the clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling band and prescribed bounds for it? and set bars and doors and said, thus far shall you come and no further. And here shall your proud waves be stopped. Can you lift up your voice to the clouds so that a flood of waters may cover you? Can you send forth lightnings so that they may go and say to you, here we are? Who has put wisdom in the inward parts or given understanding to the mind? Who has the wisdom to number the clouds? Or who can tilt the water skins of the heavens when the dust runs into a mass and the clouds clawed together? Can you hunt the prey for lion? Or satisfy the appetite of the young lions when they crouch in their dens or lie in wait in their covert? Who provides for the raven its prey when its young ones cry to God and wander about for lack of food? This is the word of the Lord. Good morning. Will you please pray with me? Lord, we are thankful that you are a God who speaks to us in many ways whether in the whispers or in the whirlwinds. Speak to us here today. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord. Amen. Amen. It's so good to be with you all this morning, especially to be back here in this space. I'm so thankful to see all of you here, and I should tell you, Full disclosure, that I am particularly excited about how God is working through this text today. I've relied on the wisdom that the book of Job has to offer us a lot during this pandemic because I think that it teaches us about what real rooted hope looks like. Not frilly hope, not fake hope, but the kind that just refuses to give up. And I think that we've all needed that a lot these past few months. One of my favorite pieces of writing about Job is from Ellen Davis, who writes that we often think about Job as a theology of suffering. We want this text to tell us if suffering really has a purpose, but instead, Davis asks us to think about Job as a theology of the sufferer. Job is a really long book, and so here's some quick context in case you need it. At the beginning of the story, Job's livelihood is taken away. His children are killed. His health is attacked. Job has three friends in this story who question what he has done to deserve this, insisting that he must have done something. And Job questions God's intentions in all of this. And when I say that Job questions God, I mean he like accuses God. He wishes to die. He says he has no hope. It's quite bleak. 
And as Ellen Davis writes, Job does his theological thinking at the top of his lungs, directing his shouts to God's face. At the beginning of the pandemic, my senior sermon at seminary was scheduled, and I wrote about Job's confronting God as something that was hopeful, that the hope of contending with God is that God would listen. And when we think about Job as a theology of the sufferer, it makes sense that we would be able to draw some meaning out of what Job says to God. But what about the whirlwind? What about our text today? I grew up in Oklahoma where we have tornadoes all the time. And you've experienced that pretty recently here. Uh, I've lived here for a while and I can tell you quite honestly that whirlwinds are like not good stuff no matter where you're at. Um, and so when I hear that God has spoken to Job out of the whirlwind, I like immediately picture destruction and violence. Right, we hide from whirlwinds. And honestly, the text that I read this morning lives up to that. Lots of people don't love the whirlwind poem because it sounds like God is being unkind. Like Job lays out his soul in front of God, asking God to speak. And when God finally talks to Job, he tells Job to brace himself like a man. Even the poetic structure of this text feels like an attack. It moves from longer questions with some commentary to these like quicker, shorter questions as the text progresses. And I couldn't help but notice that it feels a little reflective of the past 18 months, right? We started with a global pandemic that like never seemed to end, still hasn't ended. And eventually we started to face these like quick repetitive crises as a country or on a personal level. One of my favorite pieces of television ever written comes from the political drama, The West Wing. Perhaps you've seen it. In the episode two cathedrals, the president, Jed Bartlett, who is played by Martin Sheen, attends a funeral for his longtime secretary amid like lots of other personal suffering that's happening to him. And after the funeral is over, President Bartlett asks his secret service detail to close the cathedral. And for the next two minutes, the president walks the length of the National Cathedral, which is much longer than this, throwing accusations at God, much like Job. And when he gets to the front of the chancel, he says, am I to believe these things from a righteous God, from a just God, a wise God? And I wonder how many of us have thought similar things in the past 18 months, or how many of us have tried to answer our friends' questions about these things, right? Why does a just God let bad things happen? Am I to believe that a righteous God has allowed all of this? I think the reason that this text can be so frustrating is that it doesn't give Job or us an answer to these big questions. Instead, God points us all towards creation. I think sometimes we intellectualize suffering so much that we get stuck on how terrible God's response to Job seems to us that we just like completely miss the point here. But since Ellen Davis has asked us to think about this text through the lens of the sufferer, I want to talk today about a few things that this, might that this text might be able to reflect to us today. The first thing that's worth noting is that, Job, or is that God responds to Job in poetry, not just the poetry that characterizes the text, but the poetry of creation. God points Job towards creation. Sometimes, sometimes creation feels really ordered to me. Everything works together, we have day and then we have night, we have fish, we have birds. But anyone who spends any time outside knows that creation is chaotic. If you don't believe me, explain lantern flies. <laughs> you can't. There's a whole entire in 
invasive species whose job it is to eat trees, and everyone is basically begging humans to kill them, that's chaotic. That's chaotic. And here's what I want you to know. I am not telling you, like, I'm not telling you that suffering is good, and I don't think that's what the whirlwind poem is telling us either. But maybe, just maybe, we can still find some good even when we're suffering. What if in the midst of our chaos and our suffering and our pain, what if we can find solace in creation because we are being reminded to see both the chaos and the beauty, that both can exist at the same time? Those lantern flies are really quite pretty. They still kill all of our trees though. Creation is chaotic and it is good. Remember at the beginning of the pandemic when no one knew how to keep anyone safe? And so you'd see folks like walking down the sidewalk at like a full six feet apart, right? Like one person at the end of this pew, one at the other. Just taking a walk together in nature, socially distant. Even us, right? Escaping outside to keep each other safe being able to find respite in nature, finding some order, even though everything has felt so chaotic for a while. We've been through a lot of suffering, but perhaps the most beautiful thing has happened where people are spending more time outside now, going for walks, sitting on porches and patios, chatting with friends. Maybe Job is reminding us that in the chaos, we can still find hope and joy and laughter. One of the most commonly understood themes in Job is about control. Who has control? Can we, by virtue of being righteous, keep bad things from happening? Does God just do whatever God wants? And a lot of times we ask this text this question. Why do people suffer? But I wonder if we asked a different question. How should we respond when we are suffering? I wanna just reread a chunk of this text because I think that God is pointing us towards wonder instead of control here. So further down in the text it says, or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling band. Can you send forth lightnings so that they may go and say to you, here we are. What wonder. And I think here in this text we're reminded that we don't have control over everything that happens to us. And that sometimes doing damage control only creates more suffering. Sometimes we just need to be honest with God and with ourselves instead of trying to find answers for everything. Job seeks God and he moves forward in faith. And God is present in that faith. God answers Job out of the whirlwind. How have you looked for God in the wonder? Because the hope is that here for us in this text is that when we look for God, when we contend with God, God will answer us. The last thing I want to say about this text is that there's a lot of parent imagery. Verses 8 through 11 talk about wombs and swaddling the earth. Job is a parent. And one of the most beautiful analogies about the way that God loves us is like the love of a parent. Ellen Davis asks, can you love what you cannot control? And I get the sense, though I could be wrong, that that is maybe what being a parent is like. Job's children all die at the beginning of the book, and at the end of the text, it will tell us that he has more children after he is restored. And Davis writes that the clearest expression of the renewal of Job's mind is not anything he says, but it's in his willingness to have more children. Because if this book is about the theology of the suffering, then his children being replaced is just kind of like a reward for everything that he's gone through. 
But if this book is about a theology of the sufferer, what we experience, then his children represent Job's willingness to move forward, knowing that this world is painful. It's an act of hope because we love what we cannot control and we hope and we hope and we hope. And sometimes that hope is the very source of our suffering. Sometimes we get let down, but we keep hoping. And I wonder if all of this language about birthing and swaddling the clouds isn't also God's act of hope towards us, that God loves what cannot be controlled, that God loves us, that God continues to love us. The frustrating, frustrating part about this text is that it doesn't get wrapped up in a nice bow for us. God just like levels Job and we don't really know why and we have to make meaning out of that. But I think offering you a why here would be disingenuous to this text. But what I do know is that we have to keep taking steps towards God in hope because God shows up. And that's the theology of the sufferer. To keep taking steps towards hope. And so this week, maybe try to find just your next step. Ask someone for help. Ask someone for prayer. Go for a walk, sit outside on a porch, stare at the leaves changing or the sun setting or marvel at how beautiful it all really is. Maybe let go of some responsibility. Recognize that there is beauty in the chaos, that God is present, that God loves us, and that God responds to us when we move forward in hope. Amen. Will you please pray with me? Holy Lord, we are here today as people in need of your grace and your love. We are humbled and broken by the things happening in our world and in faith we seek you. Lord, remind us to breathe out sorrow and breathe in joy, to breathe out lament and to breathe in hope. Help us to see the people in our communities who need us to hold all of who they are, who need us to extend grace to them. And Lord, we are so thankful that you have made each of us different and that we all have different gifts to bring to this community. We are thankful that you encourage us to grow in faith and that you are present with us in our hope. And so we lift up prayers of thanks and gratitude for grandparents and for family. Lord, we also pray for guidance and direction because we know that you are a God who walks with us. This morning as the sun shines in through these windows and we are quiet, we know that many of us are weary and so we pray for a sense of grace that heaviness cannot take away. Help us have hearts to be able to be still and breathe and listen to what you are telling us in seasons where we are waiting. And so we pray for the sense of trust and protection for the safe travels for Debbie and Doug. And Lord, we know that this life is not always easy. Your word tells us that the beloved of the Lord rests between his shoulders. And right now we pray for that rest. We pray for those who are going through difficult times that they can find rest between the shoulders of an almighty God. And Lord, if they can't find that rest, let them know that you walk with them, that you are a present God who is near to us in difficult times. And so we pray with and for missionaries in Haiti, for Faith, Jill, Ebby, Dolores, Donna Jean, Emma, Janine, Laura, Vince, Bob, Polly and Jim, 
Jackie and family, Mary and Stephanie, Frank, Jean, Mylan, for Barb, Walt, Luis, Cheryl, Jenny, and Beth. And now let us pray in the way that God has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We are thankful to have been blessed with so much, and we are thankful for the ways that you have been giving in your tithes and your offerings. They can be dropped in the box on the way out of the church, or you can mail them if you're worshiping with us online at 2020 Brunswick Avenue, Lawrenceville, New Jersey, 08648. Will you please pray with me? God, may the offerings brought today be used as seeds, planted faithfully, and nurtured lovingly, so that God's way may be realized anew in this world. Grant us the humility we need to plant, and then tend your precious garden. Amen.